Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Today's program is about those long-legged waders. Now, the star of the show, of course, and for most of us throughout most of the range, is the great blue heron. And this is a, a bird that most people know by sight. They're common around uh, ponds and Smithville Lake and, and larger bodies of water, smaller bodies of water. They're big, they're tall, they're showy, and, and it, people people know them because it, and and of course they're misnamed. Sometimes people call them cranes and people call them uh, it, 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 lots of things. But the true name of this bird is a great blue heron. No, he's not blue. He's really more gray. But okay. Uh, but they are very distinct. Uh, they're very uh, good predators. They eat lots of fish. They eat, uh, they eat frogs, they, they eat small mammals like little muskrats and things like that. Uh, pretty ferocious predators. They can swallow a pretty big fish too. So they, they're, they're very well known and, and we joke on our bird hikes when we see one flying over, uh, we call them pterodactyls because they are so big and they have big wings when they fly over they can they have a you know an opposing shadow as they fly over but uh, this crooked neck shape when they're flying a crane would fly with its neck straight out in front of it uh, extended whereas the herons fly with their their necks crooked like that so that's something that separates them out and make one of the things not he's not a crane he's a great blue heron now this time of year in the spring and also in the fall, we see birds that are large like this out in the bodies of water that confuse people. They think maybe they're albino uh, great blue herons because the great blue herons are so common, but they're not. Uh, the white birds in this area, now I'm saying there can't be a great, uh, an albino great blue heron. Obviously, that's genetically possible, but egrets... The, the, uh, this is a great egret, and they are almost uh, the same size as far as height and everything goes as a great blue heron. And but they they're moving through between now, well, for the next couple three weeks around wetland areas, you can see them uh, several of them moving around in those areas. And that's uh, the inspiration kind of for. Uh, I started thinking about this program. Is this is a, a, a question we get a lot in the spring? And then they say, oh, I saw a white heron. Uh, there, these are known as egrets, and the real tall ones are great egrets and uh, like I said we'll, we'll see them a lot in the spring. Now there are other egrets we have that are much less common. This is a much smaller egret and notice that very that black long bill and if we could see in the picture he has yellow feet this is a snowy egret uh, and for, for Missouri that's a pretty good bird. They don't occur here nearly as much as they do in other states especially if you live to the south and of course the east coast and the gulf coast uh, the snowy egrets are far more common um, but they they the same hunting style those long legs they you know, go along and they catch frogs they catch fish with that long bill of theirs whereas its counterpoint really on the heron side uh, you got egrets now this is a green heron if you have an old field guide it may call it a green back heron uh, they have uh, uh, a source of there now they're a little more secretive and so you don't see them quite as often as you do because they, a lot of times they're not standing out in the wide open like this they are they do do that but a lot of times they're in vegetation and a little more secretive uh, they nest in the area i love one of my uh, the old time names they have them I had a little book that had all the old uh, names for birds and the old uh, name in there for this bird was to fly up the creek bird uh, and which is very descriptive. They do like to live along creeks and nest along creeks. And when you flush them, they're very, you know, shy. They fly up the creek. And so this is a, a, a green heron, uh, much smaller. And uh, they have the, the really orangish legs, which is uh, something that you see when they're flying and kind of dangling behind them and all. So uh, this is a green heron. So we, we do see those. Um, and then uh, all, moving back to the smaller on the egret side, we see cattle egrets. Now cattle egrets are one of the only birds that we know made it across from Africa to the U.S. on its own, not ship assisted. They actually made the flight across there and have populated this continent from birds that flew over uh, across the Atlantic Ocean, which is really, really impressive. But they're more of a southern bird. Obviously, that's where they came into the country was down in the southeast, Florida and those areas. Uh, but they have now populated 
uh, those areas. And in southern Missouri, we see them more than we do up here in northern Missouri. But a lot of times when we see them, they are out in pastures around cattle. And there's a couple of cows down here who you see in the picture, but here is a line of cattle egrets. And they famously sit on, uh, stand on the backs of cows and they walk around with them. And when the cows kick up insects, they snap them and they grab them. Um, uh, very cool. And, and then that, as that last picture showed, the males, and this is a beautiful breeding shot, a breeding uh, uh, adult ca uh, cattle egret, and you can see the salmon color on the chest and on the and the beautiful bill color is amazing in this photo. It's it's, it's beautiful, um, but they are they are kind of the same size as that green heron, so they're kind of equivalents there. Um, but there are lots of other herons, and I know people watch this from all over the country, so we've got to throw in a couple of others. Um, we're going to do. Um, a little blue heron, which is a very much smaller, down in that size about the uh, cattle egret. Um, beautiful bird, you know, a few shades of purplish blue. Uh, again, a bird we don't see this far north very much here. It's more of a southern bird, have a long bill. Um, you guys down uh, south of here would see those more commonly than we do up here. And let's see, who else do I have here? Well, I do. I, don't, I must have missed it. Uh, the the tricolored heron has a very long beak and is far less common in our area than it is down south and there as well. Now, a couple of the other long-legged waders that do occur here, uh, maybe not quite as common as any of those, are the night herons. This is a yellow-crowned night heron, uh, as, and as the name does suggest, it is nocturnal. It hunts at night, and they're very... <laughs> Uh, ferocious predators. I mean, they eat lots of frogs and and uh, small mammals and, and birds if they can get them. They they, they they will eat just about anything they can catch. Um, and th there is a black crowned night heron, but interiorly here in that part of the world, almost all the night herons, uh, especially the nesting in Missouri, are all yellow crowned night herons. And you can see where it gets this name up there, the yellow yellow crown. And then the uh, uh, the confusing part, of course, is the juvenile birds, this is the one that's just hatched this year, uh, and you can see the stripe doesn't look anything like the adults, but the bill is the same. And you'll see them walking along creeks and, and streams, especially in small ponds um, uh, in the area. So uh, the night herons are another uh, member of this long-legged wading group. Um, uh, then there, the ibis, which are these guys with the long down curve bill beautiful. Uh, they, they don't nest here, but they move through. Um, and the ones that we see here are mostly white-faced ibis. There's also glossy ibis that can occur here, but the, that long, long bill for probing deep in the mud uh, and the ibis group. Um, quite rarely do we see a white ibis. Now, again, you guys that live down south, live in coastal areas, you'll, you'll see a lot more white ibis in that area, uh, and the code tidal marshes and stuff, but they do occur here occasionally. But the thing that long, that long, long bill of theirs for probing deep in the soil. So those are ibis. And then last summer, unprecedented, uh, we had an invasion of these guys. Uh, this is a limpkin. And a lim uh, again, hardly ever seen north of uh, the, the Gulf states in Florida and, and, and you know, the Carolinas. But last, last summer we had a huge invasion. They were all over lakes and all over the state and all over the Midwest and even up into the north the, uh, part of the country. Again, that long bill, but a, a mottled uh, brown bird. With the, 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 but they're uh, mainly specialized in eating apple snails, as I understand it. So uh, they, they mainly live down south. And then, of course, one a prize bird that we occasionally see here is the roseate spoonbill. Uh, this one doesn't show the pink color uh, that way, the photo as much, but it does show you that amazing uh, spoonbill of theirs, and they wave it back and forth in the water uh, in, in the Florida and the Carolinas and on the Gulf Coast and down in Texas. You, you see the roseate spoonbills in, court, in, in coastal areas, but we have several sightings in Missouri. They, they show up here from year to year, and uh, you know it's almost annual anymore. We do get a sighting or two of roseate spoonbills. So another long-legged wader. So the, the, the topic and the number of birds is, is just 
amazing and they're a, a great group to study if you want to do more research obviously you can learn a lot more about any of those but I thought I'd just give you an overview and the last thing I'll, I'll show you is this picture by Linda Williams um, and this is a rookery and this is how most of these long-legged waders uh, this is a, a great blue heron colony but this is how they typically nest they nest in groups called rookeries um, stick uh, uh, nest up in trees and in large clumps of, I know uh, there's a big one right across in Leavenworth when you can see it from the overlook at Weston Bend State Park just north of us and this time of year when there's no leaves on the trees just look out uh, off that platform if you get to hike up there and, and we'll look out the plane you can see it across the river and you see several of these large stick nests up there and sometimes you can see the great blue herons coming in and landing so really cool the, the long-legged wader group fun fun topic thanks for the idea for the program give us a like give us a share if you're on YouTube please subscribe until then come on let's talk birds